In the early 1980s, while European manufacturers like Demag, Liebherr and O&K dominated the ultra-large hydraulic excavator market, a consortium of Japanese industrial giants quietly embarked on an ambitious project. Their goal was to develop one of the largest hydraulic mining shovels ever built at that time. The machine they created would operate in Australian mines for just five years before disappearing into obscurity. This is the story of the SMEC 4500. To appreciate what the 4500 represented, let's first refresh our memory about the landscape of mining diggers during this era. In 1983, when the SMEC was commissioned, the hydraulic mining shovel market was firmly in the hands of German manufacturers. De Mag had been building excavators since 1925 and introduced their first fully hydraulic model in 1954. By 1978, they had released the H241, a massive hydraulic mining shovel. The 485, which would become one of the largest hydraulic shovels in the world, was still three years away. Lieber, the Swiss-German manufacturer, had revolutionized excavator design from 1974 by introducing hydraulic power to replace the old cable-operated systems. Their machines, such as the 981, became international hits. Owen K., another German heavyweight, was also competing fiercely in this space. On American side, Marion and Busiris were making moves but never reached domination in the hydraulic segment. Japan, meanwhile, was a different story. While Japanese firms like Hitachi had developed domestic hydraulic excavator technology as early as 1965 and Kobe Steel had produced Japan's first electric mining shovel back in 1930, no Japanese manufacturer had yet attempted to build a truly massive hydraulic mining excavator to compete with the Germans in the 400-ton-plus class. That was about to change. The SMEC, short for Surface Mining Equipment for Coal Technology Research Association, emerged from a collaborative effort commissioned in 1983 by the Japanese Mining and Research Association. This was no small undertaking. Building an ultra-class mining shovel required expertise across multiple disciplines – heavy steel fabrication, hydraulic systems, engine technology, and track undercarriage design. To tackle this challenge, the project brought together three of Japan's most respected industrial firms. Kawasaki Heavy Industries served as the lead designer and builder. Founded in 1878 as Kawasaki Dockyard, the corporation had evolved into one of Japan's three major heavy industrial manufacturers, alongside Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and IHI. Kawasaki had been supplying hydraulic components to the excavator market since the 1960s, developing pumps, motors and control valves for earth-moving machinery. They understood hydraulic systems intimately. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries contributed their engineering expertise. The conglomerate had a long history with hydraulic excavators, having partnered with the French firm Sikam to produce one of the first hydraulic diggers on Japanese soil, branded as Yumbo. Kobe Steel, known internationally by its Kobelco trademark, rounded out the consortium. Their roots in steel production dated back to 1905, and they had manufactured Japan's first construction machine in 1930 with the 50K electric mining shovel. This heritage in heavy steel fabrication made them essential partners for building a machine of this magnitude. The 4500 was an enormous machine by the standards of its time. The operating weight came in at 463 tons, or approximately 420 metric tons. Power came from diesel engines producing 2400 horsepower at 1800 RPM. This may not sound too extreme today, but these were insane figures back in 1983. Two bucket configurations were available. The standard bucket offered a capacity of 30 cubic meters, suitable for overburden removal and general mining applications. A rock bucket with 15 cubic meters of capacity was provided for harder material and more demanding digging conditions. The machine rode on a reinforced undercarriage with a fairly flat design similar to what you can still see today on Komatsu mining diggers. What makes the SMEC 4500 particularly noteworthy is its timing. 
Caterpillar, the American equipment giant, did not enter the mining-sized excavator market until 1992, when they unveiled the 5130. That machine weighed around 193 tons and was powered by a 755-horsepower CAT diesel engine. The larger 5230, which weighed 347 tons and produced 1,470 horsepower, would not arrive until 1994. This means the SMEC predated Caterpillar's first mining excavators by nearly a full decade. At 463 tons, the Japanese machine was substantially larger than what Caterpillar would eventually bring to market. While Hitachi introduced the EX3500 in 1987, which they claimed was the world's largest hydraulic excavator in production at that time, with an operating weight of 328 tons, the SMEC 4500 had already been commissioned four years earlier. The machine arrived in Australia in 1987, four years after its commissioning, and was immediately deployed in local coal mining operations. For the next five years, it loaded haul trucks while undergoing intensive real-world field trials under production conditions. The giant shovel remained in operation from 1987 to 1992 before being permanently shut down. For a time, optimism surrounded the project, with industry chatter suggesting that successful trials would soon give way to a pre-production phase and a commercial launch targeted for the mid-1990s. That moment never came. Despite its impressive specifications, the 4500 never evolved beyond its prototype status. Several factors contributed to this outcome. First, the machine was developed at a time when Japan's domestic mining industry was already in decline. Japanese coal production had peaked at 55 million tons in 1960 and had shrunk to just over 16 million tons by 1985. Domestic mines were closing due to cheap coal imports and high production costs. There simply was not a robust home market to support continued development. Second, the established German and American manufacturers had decades of experience and global service networks that a new entrant could not easily replicate. When a machine breaks down in a remote Australian mine, having parts and technicians available quickly is essential. The SMEC consortium lacked this infrastructure. Third, the timing was challenging. By the late 1980s and early 1990s, the competitive landscape was shifting. Komatsu formed a joint venture with Daimag in 1996, eventually acquiring them fully in 1999. This partnership between Japanese manufacturing excellence and German mining equipment expertise would prove more successful than the SMEC approach. Hitachi, meanwhile, continued developing their own ultra-large excavator line, releasing the EX5500 in 1997, a machine that would become highly successful in the mining industry. The SMEC 4500 was scrapped between 1997 and 1998, roughly a decade after it began work in Australia. Its components were likely recycled, and no examples survive today. Unlike some famous mining machines that have been preserved as monuments to industrial achievement, the giant simply vanished. No museum displays its bucket. No mining heritage park features its crawler tracks. The machine exists only in a handful of photographs and in the memories of the operators and maintenance crews who worked with it during its brief operational life. The SMEC represents an important footnote in the history of mining equipment development. It demonstrated that Japanese industry was capable of engineering ultra-class mining machinery at a time when this market segment was entirely dominated by European and American manufacturers. The collaboration between Kawasaki, Mitsubishi and Kobe Steel showcased the Japanese approach to tackling complex engineering challenges through consortium-based development, a model that has proven successful in other industries. While the 4500 itself never entered production, the expertise gained from the project contributed to Japan's broader capabilities in construction and mining equipment. Today, Komatsu and Hitachi are major global players in the mining excavator market, competing directly with Liebherr and Caterpillar for the largest contracts in the world. The story of the SMEC 4500 is one of ambition, innovation and, ultimately, failure. 
This 400-ton giant, built a decade before Caterpillar entered the mining excavator market, proved that Japanese engineering could potentially compete at the highest levels. Today, the SMEC is largely forgotten, a footnote in the history of mining equipment that most enthusiasts have never heard of. But for those who appreciate the engineering achievements of the heavy equipment industry, this machine deserves to be remembered, not as a failure, but as a pioneering effort that came before its time.